Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jean, your trusted engineering mentor. As a software engineering manager for big tech companies like Facebook and WhatsApp, I have had the privilege of mentoring many junior engineers in my career. And throughout these experiences, I have recognized a common pattern that can significantly impact your engineering career journey. Today, I'm excited to share seven tips that can help you navigate these common pitfalls and pave the way for your growth towards senior engineering or even tech leads. So let's dive in. The first mistake that I often notice is thinking that working in software engineering means doing everything by yourself. Working together with other people is very important for your success in many industries, including the tech world, because you're always going to be a part of a team throughout your career. So focus on making good relationships from the beginning. Your connections with others are going to be valuable tools that stay with you throughout your career. If you look at a lot of the startups, you'll often see people who used to work together teaming up again on new projects. So if you've been following me, I was an early engineer at WhatsApp. And when one of our founders, Brian Afton, acquired Signal, a bunch of engineers left Facebook and followed him to work together. And this kind of connection-driven startup is really common in tech. And that's part of the reason why it's also kind of hard to break into tech because people tend to work with the people they already know and have worked with. And personally, I have become really close with the early WhatsApp colleagues. We know about each other's families and I even know everyone's pets names. So talk to your teammates and others around you, even if you don't directly work with them, get to know them personally and build relationship and work together on projects and have fun together. Again, you may change your jobs, but your network will always stay with you. Let's dive into the second tip. Don't stick to a straight path. Life isn't like walking in a straight line and your career isn't either. Recently, I read a book called Range, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World by David Epstein. The book says that it's better to have a mix of experiences rather than just focusing on one thing from the start. This is sort of against the idea that building a specialty early on is important. He talks about a lot of studies that talk about how having a range of experiences can help you make unexpected connections and come up with really creative solutions. The book also gives examples of athletes trying out different sports, musicians playing all kinds of different instruments, and even Nobel Prize winners having hobbies that have nothing to do with the areas of expertise. So don't be afraid to try out different projects, learn different technologies, and work on things that are even outside of tech. It not only makes you better at software engineering, but also helps you adapt to always changing tech world when you have a diverse set of experiences. This book also talks about how in the age of AI, people with a variety of experiences will be the most successful because AI struggles when things are too unknown or too ambiguous. And that's where people with diverse experiences can really shine. So go ahead and explore different areas. Think about whatever you're interested in and go learn it. Now let's talk about the third mistake, limiting your job options because of what's popular. I do see this in a lot of comments. People were getting mixed up between following trends and learning new topics. So when you're learning new topics, it doesn't mean that you have to learn everything that's popular right now. But instead, you want to be able to figure out what is personally interesting to you and explore that. So think about what you're good at or what you enjoy doing instead of asking people what is popular and what else everyone else is doing by thinking about what type of jobs will fit your life goals, values, and interests, you'll discover more satisfying and lasting job options. Now on to the fourth mistake, it is not putting enough effort into learning how to learn. As a software engineer, I guarantee you, you will be learning new technology all the time. When you're diving into new tech, you want to understand how you learn best. Do you like seeing things visually? Do you learn better through listening, right? Like some people love to read physical books and some people like to listen to audiobooks. Think about how you like to learn. Also think about setting goals. Is it helpful for you to set clear goals? Does it help you keep, stay focused and motivated? 
Others might need more organized schedules or plan to thrive. And some people find repetition to be really effective in memory boosting. Reflect on what methods are working well for you and what could use improvements. Again, don't just follow YouTube videos suggesting you need to do this method or this technique. What is the best for everyone can be different. So adjust your study techniques according to your own needs. Now let's talk about tip number five. Don't take things too seriously. Don't get me wrong, being hardworking and learning and exploring is all good, but it's just as important to find joy and fun in your work. So don't load yourself up with extra pressure. Take a moment to chill out and have fun with the process. I personally can really relate to this because I used to be super driven and ambitious, especially as a junior engineer. What helped me change my perspectives was taking mindfulness class. Mindfulness is all about focusing on the present moment without judging yourself. And it's about being aware of your thoughts and feelings without getting too caught up in them. Being in the moment and watching your experience without judgment. Your mindset is one of the most important factors for your success in your career. This helped me find a better balance between work and free time. And I think I became a much more enjoyable person to work with as well. Now let's talk about the mistake number six not taking care of yourself. This is another one that I have to admit I was really guilty of in my 20s. With all the travel for my first job at IBM, my sleep schedule was really all over the place, especially with the time difference. Plus being on the road, I wasn't eating very healthy. I was eating a lot of restaurant food and hotel food. And the lack of sleep and the poor diet left me really tired all the time and I had no energy to exercise. Around the time I turned 30, my health really hit rock bottom. I just could not sustain that type of lifestyle anymore. And it was a wake up call for me. I had to learn the hard way to prioritize sleep healthier eating, and exercise. Now I make sure to get at least eight hours of sleep, exercise one hour every day, and eat super healthy, mostly with home-cooked meals. And your well-being will directly affect your focus, concentration, and overall productivity and performance. So taking the time for your health is an investment that pays off throughout your career. So make it a priority. Now, last but not least, mistake number seven is not asking for help. Asking for support is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. As a manager, I have noticed a lot of junior engineers do struggle with finding the right balance between asking for too much help and not asking enough help. So here's a simple formula that I do share with all my reports and mentees. When you encounter a problem or a challenge, start by searching online, check Stack Overflow or internal documents to try to figure out on your own. And trust me, this is not a waste of time because it is a valuable process to help you learn. Most of the time, you can find a solution within a few hours but in rare cases where you are actually facing a challenging challenge, you can't figure it out for over 24 hours, then it is time to reach out to a senior engineer, a manager, or a mentor. And when seeking help, present a short, maybe three to five minute summary of number one, what problem you're trying to solve, number two, your goals, and three, what you have tried and what the outcomes are so far. If you are feeling stuck with any projects or problems at work or life, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help. And I also encourage you to check out the comments and help out others. Even if it's not in this video's comments, seek out for people that you can help out at your workplace or at school because life is all about paying it forward. Now, if you want to explore the field of AI engineering and software engineering to decide what is the right career path for you, this is the video that you want to watch. Otherwise, this is a video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.